Welcome, Commander. If you have been looking to improve your skirmish abilities, then you've come to the right place. It's my goal to not only have you command ready for defeating the AI all the way up to expert, but to put you in a position where you have a core tactical and strategical understanding to be able to develop your own battle plans. Now, if you're looking to fight with or against other players, friends or strangers in online multiplayer, then tackling harder AI is a great way to build up confidence as many of the skills used to accomplish such a task will be tested in a multiplayer environment. When you load into a match, you'll start with a headquarters and a single squad. And there are two major questions every commander has. What units do I build? And where do I send them? To answer these questions, we need to understand what our primary goal is at this moment. In the early game, we need to get enough fuel to unlock the first tier of anti-vehicle technology and prepare for those vehicle threats in the mid-game. As the game progresses and you build up your base, look for the various anti-vehicle units that will become available to you. Now, depending on what faction you play, there can be different answers, but the answers all share something in common. We can divide the units you have immediate access to into two categories, mainline infantry squads and support squads, produced from either the headquarters or your tier 1 building. Mainline infantry squads are integral to your army composition and will make up the bulk of your forces. The US Rifleman Squad, the British Infantry Section, the Wehrmacht Grenadier and the Africa Corps Panzer Grenadier are your main combat squads you have access to at the beginning of a skirmish match. Now it might seem unusual to produce so many of the same unit, but as we will learn a little later, it's not what you have, it's how you use it. As the match progresses, depending on your army, you may unlock new mainline infantry, and depending on your battle group, you may unlock even more. Support units include engineer-type squads, which can construct field defenses, weapons teams like the heavy machine gun which can suppress enemies, and mortars which can hit enemies from far away. Ultralight vehicles are fast and can reposition to anywhere on the map quickly. Snipers which shoot with deadly accuracy and units which excel at capturing territory. So how do we decide how many mainline infantry squads to get and when to use support squads? The trick is to keep producing units in the early game until you have enough fuel to advance in technology. This rule applies to any army you play. Although for the US forces, you have access to the Tier 1A Barracks and Tier 1B Weapon Support Center at the start of the game. To gain access to the Tier 2 Motor Pool, you will need to construct a support center from the headquarters. And when should you be using support type units? There's no definitive answer for this. It comes down to your own creative strategy making decisions and there's a lot of factors to consider. Just remember though, it's not what you have, it's how you use it. But here are some examples that may help. This map has a big building in the middle. A machine gun could cover plenty of angles, and I will focus on playing around this area of the map. This map has a nice spot for a mortar, so I can punish my enemy standing behind cover, and I'll use a starting sapper squad to plant mines on the path that approaches that mortar. I'm going to use a jeep on this map to provide support to my mainline infantry squads, and I'll dart from one side of the map to the other, so I need to train some engineers to keep that jeep repaired. The enemy has a machine gunner. I could use a mortar here to punish them safely from afar, or maybe I'll try a sniper, which after I'm done with the MG, will be useful at hitting moving targets. Take a look at the map for fuel points. Try to at least grab half of the map's fuel. Munitions will be useful too, providing us with a resource for upgrading units with better equipment, or using battle group and unit abilities like strafing runs or tossing a grenade. But it's not as simple as sending squads to capture fuel points. Territory needs to be connected and territory will be contested. 
So let's talk about the concept of our opening strategic movements. Your opening strategy should consider the spacing between your units. Let's look at three similar examples with three squads on the field. A basic opener with your starting unit and two mainline infantry squads. Here, the three squads are split evenly across the map with your starting unit in the middle. If the top squad becomes under fire, we can send the middle squad to assist and potentially flank. However, the bottom squad won't be able to cross the map in time. If the middle squad is engaged on, we could send both the top and bottom squad to assist. An easy victory. In this example, our middle squad is the weakest, so having the potential support of two mainline infantry squads is an advantage. In this second example, the starting unit has been swapped with a mainline infantry squad. With more fighting power on the top side of the map, the more likely we will control this area. With two mainline infantry squads in close proximity, they can potentially deny this fuel point or even capture it. However, our starting unit will receive no support, but they may still be able to capture the bottom left fuel point and keep it for a while. If this squad comes under fire, they'll be under strict orders to avoid conflict. In this third example, we will focus our squads on a smaller area, concentrating on these sectors which contain 50% of the map's fuel, before turning our attention to other nearby sectors on our side of the map, or pushing deeper into the enemy's side. Now, if either three squads is engaged on, support can arrive quickly and in force. However, it does mean we give up the rest of the map until we produce more squads to advance through those sectors. There's plenty more strategy talk to have, but let's move on to tactics. Strategy has defined what and where, now tactics is the how. To understand tactics, we'll be using this simple example. In this example, you can see three mainline infantry squads positioned close. Our strategy is to focus on this area of the map with the three squads ready to support each other. These three rifleman squads each have a different role in this battle. We'll call them Abel, Baker, and Charlie squad. Charlie is on the left flank, Abel in the mid, and Baker on the right. As Abel moves to capture territory, they encounter resistance and move to the best cover they can find. Abel's role here is to stall the enemy. Grenadiers win in a long-range cover-to-cover shootout and I'm outnumbered two to one, so my enemy is thinking they will win, but I'm just keeping them occupied. Baker Squad's purpose wasn't just to capture the fuel. They were tactically positioned on the right flank. Whilst fuel is important, Baker Squad is in the perfect position to flank the enemy. If we win this fight, we can come back and capture the fuel as well as other nearby territory. If we lose the fight, it will only cost us more sectors. Baker Squad takes cover behind a car and the Grenadiers are forced to move away. Now let's look at Charlie Squad. Charlie Squad is also watching a flank, but when the combat starts, they don't have as good of a position as Baker Squad has. I could flank around the back, However, the fog of war offers uncertainty, whilst Baker Squad knows exactly what they're getting into. So Charlie Squad's role becomes a reserve squad, backing up and taking over for Abel. As the Grenadiers fall back, it's time to use our number advantage to get another advantage. The US Rifleman Squad is better at short-range combat compared to the Wehrmacht Grenadiers. We left Abel to capture the victory point before rejoining with Baker and Charlie. The enemy brings in another Grenadier squad, but because of our rapid response, a straight-up fight is now in our favor. Baker squad suffers the heaviest losses, so we'll give them the task of capturing that fuel point we wanted earlier. So, even though these three rifleman squads are all the same unit, they each served a different purpose. And that purpose changed over time, depending on the circumstances. It's not what you have, it's how you use it. If you haven't done so already, then it's time to get that tier 2 building and join me in the next video where we will look at improving your mid-game ability 
in skirmishes. Company of Heroes 3 has a lot of depth to it and it isn't possible to cover every detail. So why not share some tips in the comments and visit community.companyofheroes.com to join the co-development and provide feedback directly to Relic. Good luck on the battlefield, Commander. Anuki, out.